leave you with a few words from Professor John Bradford, Senior Lecturer and Honorary Consultant of Restorative Programs at the University of Dundee. Good morning. As Claire said, and as David said, it's an enormous privilege and honor to be welcomed by you here. Before we actually started, I don't think I've met so many deans or professors or distinguished colleagues in different stakeholders uh, in about half an hour. But moreover, I met friends when they came to Dundee and people who I met last year when I came to Cairo. It really is an enormous pleasure. I'm going to share with you, if I could, some of my vision for the master's course that we're going to start at ASCD, our partner, in January. It's a difficult issue, this, and in a moment I'm going to share with you a slide from the Journal of Dental Research saying many of the Western-style programs may not always meet the needs of all people in our community. And so when David and I spent many hours trying to fl flesh out a, a program which is appropriate and realistic, we tried to actually embrace all these different priorities to give one a, a young dentist or an old dentist would be willing to actually engage in, but it would actually have both the strengths of our more European type dentistry and the strengths of your dentistry as well. And this is the paper which probably has actually influenced our program more than anything else. And Professor Williams and the late Professor Shyam said it is unfitting for us to impose our Western style education systems or our preventive systems or our dental systems on you. A true partnership is this synergy actually using the strengths of both of ours such that we can both, I can learn from you and you can possibly learn from us. So now I'm going to go into some of the characteristics. I'm going to almost make a distinction between the program that David and I have presented to our quality assurance and what some of the other programs are. I'm not for one moment decrying the other programs. They have a role as well. But what I would like to do is to actually share with you what I think, what David and I think is as an appropriate program, which uh, we are going to start in January here. It's dealing with uncertainty. Now, I apologize for those people in the audience who are neurosurgeons and not dentists, but they could, we can teach them some dentistry as well. When I came to Dundee about 25 years ago, it's the usual thing, isn't it? You have your dentist, and you always have to continue with your old dentist. This was a, a person who I saw in London, and she rang me after I just started in Dundee. She said, I've got terrible toothache. And my dentist started doing a reroute treatment, and this is not the most um, expert dentistry I've ever seen on that lower um, left six. So I started doing the root treatment. I apologize about the radiograph. And then, and as I said, my horror, I believed that dentist and started re-root treating that lower six, whereas the last standing mole in the tooth, as you can see, has got a periridiculous radiolucency. Well, I've made an error. But if we drill into that, there are very much more issues than just me actually believing what the other dentist did and just carry on with the treatment. And this is almost the first point, and probably the most important point I want to actually make in my, my small talk. It's dealing with diagnostic ambiguity and uncertainty. Not to just lie to the patient, but to share that information with the patient and actually share information with her on how we actually um, advance her treatment. But it's more than that, isn't it? 
What do I do? Do I question that colleague, that private practitioner in Harley Street, say, not only has your past treatment been suboptimal, but you've started doing the wrong tooth? But then if I do suggest that, what does he do? They question my own competence. I actually trusted another person, and my trust was possibly not in the patient's best interest. It was actually supporting what another colleague. And then it's this issue of what do you do with the patient? Of course, I treated the patient for a long period of time. She'd come all the way up from London to Dundee and stayed over the treatment, and I started actually treating the wrong tooth. And so this is what, this is what I want to embed in our colleagues when we start our program in Jan January. This ability to deal with uncertainty, not just what I call the jewelry aspects, the perfect sort of dentistry that I like to do as a dentist, but to actually embrace some of these other issues. Well, it went very well, but it's fairly straightforward stuff, isn't it? I did a reroute treatment on both teeth, I did castings, and then I did crowns, but I'll come to that at the end. But it's quite interesting, because at Dundee, I do castings. Of course, everyone uses fiber whites and resin composite. Of course, I've got gray hair. But where's the evidence for this? And absolutely the thing which underpins both the orthodontic course and mine is an evidence base. We heard about Jan Clarkson, who came over here, the leading person in the United Kingdom at evidence-based dentistry. So our program has got to have those foundations on evidence. But it also means that the dentist, the practitioner, should be able to deal with uncertainty and ambiguity. Otherwise, they become very narrowed practitioners. Well, this is the usual slide of the university. And I haven't shown one of the most attractive slides. This is our tower building. And when you come to Dundee, I'll show you that. That's where the principal is. That's where Professor Burr makes these big decisions with Cahale, whether or not we, we, these, we have these memorandum. But interestingly, it's a 60s building. It's not terribly attractive, but it's been given um, a special status by our government. Uh, that it, it, it's an example of 1960s um, architecture at its very worst, and that's why I showed it. But underneath, I wanted to say that what underpins the whole vision of our university are these awful points which you can't read, and I'm delighted if you don't read them. Now, with these points, we have to work under very definite um, criteria actually imposed by our government, and they're different um, frameworks which don't just apply to medicine, nursing, dentistry, but all, both undergraduate and at school level and postgraduate. So we've got to capture those in our undergraduate program. Now, I don't want to go into the details of them, but if I just summarize them, it's knowledge, knowledge, application of knowledge, which I'm very much more interested in, then these generic skills, which I just shared with you about this uncertainty and ambiguity. And then we talk about communication skills. And the last thing is working in teams and individuals. And we cannot, and I had such a long conversation with you beforehand, we cannot actually um, suggest this program is appropriate and it's a master's in restorative dental care from the University of Dundee unless we meet those criteria. Now, David was talking about losing some of his hair with the amount of work. I don't know what I've lost with, with myself. In fact, in my, I think I dream about Egypt. And in my house, my wife forbids me to mention the word Egypt because it just has occupied my whole life for about the last four or five months, going through this procedure of ensuring that we have a program which is fit for our university and also is sympathetic to your needs. The last thing I wanted to say about this most interesting issue 
is this issue of clinical gestalt. Now, I didn't know what it meant when I wrote this article for the British Dental Journal, but what Took said, he said that the, 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 dis, the distinction between us as learned professionals and those people are not is that we're able to deal with uncertainty and we have clinical gestalt. That is A and B doesn't lead to C, but it may be A and B leads to E or X. This idea that you as experts can actually um, deliver such that patients or society as a whole actually benefit from our care. Now, I think Professor Byrne, he's sitting rather close to me, and he'll probably kick me with this one, because this is one of the early sort of models I use, which is the delivery of the program. And you can see this horrible Microsoft diagram, and don't look at the modules, because they've changed for that. But that's what I'm trying to say, is our program has got to be agile. When I start working here, on a flying faculty model every few weeks. People are going to say, it's not working. So how do I actually shape it so at the end of those two years that the students will have benefited and say, that has actually equipped me for further learning and further study, that it won't just finish with that master MSc, but it'll be actually a stepping stone for a continuum of learning. And so really, the modules are all to do with introductions. Of course it's got to be dentistry. So the main part of the modules in relation to the credits are the, uh, the preparatory phase and, the, and then the reconstructive phase. The preparatory phase will actually interface with the orthodontic care because of course it's so important that patients demonstrate oral health before they have the orthodontic treatment. And then there are these softer skills, but I don't really mean they're softer skills, but they're issues of communication, leadership and management, professionalism. And then I said very much in the long discussions I've had with people, we have to have an evidence base. So I've decided just to put 20 credits in an evidence-based aspect of restorative dental care because it is a master's and has got to have certain academic um, credentials. So I don't go into any detail of that, part of saying that we've spent an enormous amount of time trying to shape it so we can actually um, ensure that when we start in January, we've then got a program which is fit at that time but then it'll evolve and become stronger and work more in synergy with the orthodontic program. So this is, if you like, the bullets. It's a two-year program. Now you can see the actual cost. The fees for this is £9,500 um, sterling per year. But in fact, what we're going to do, because this is a new innovative program, just for the first year, it's going to be 7.5 thousand pounds, and it's going to be that for the next year, because it's an innovative program where we're going to try and actually set the scene for the future. When we're established, we'll then actually look at that situation again. It's not only restorative dental care. You can see from the flavor I've tried to, to give you there. It's to deal with societal inequalities. What we don't want to do is actually increase the inequalities by just having a very, very sophisticated program. Yes, there will be sophisticated dentistry, but there will also these other issues which I said, these other skills, so that we're actually training leaders for the future. I am responsible. It is the University of Dundee. This week I've met some delightful colleagues and they're going to support me. I'm going to work with them. I'm going to learn from them and hopefully them from I. I am responsible. It's an MSc from the University of Dundee.
assessment, they always say assessment drives learning, and I've always got slight concerns about that. Why do I want to learn about delivering effective care to patients? It's a patient. I'm dealing with their body. I'm invading their body. So that should be the driver. But we've got to actually have some degree of assessment. So I'm just going to jump through this slide with you. They're going to be short and long-term cases. Those short-term cases will be preparatory treatments for patients who are going to have orthodontic care. The long cases will be the ones whereby they actually do the really sufficient sophisticated restorative dentistry, which is what many of the people will come along for the program. Yes, they're going to be assignments. I'm not going to sort of give people essays. I don't think they're, they're inefficient ways of things. They're assignments, and they'll be actually supported by us both before they submit the assignment, and then they'll be formally assessed on that. Reflection, so important in the continuum of learning that the actual student will have those skills so they can reflect on their abilities, not just during the program, but forever. So important. And then you see this strange thing, which I'm going to spend a few moments talking with you about. It's called the epic theater. I know the educationists in the audience will say, well, how do you capture communication? How do you capture leadership and management? How do you capture professionalism? And what we do with our undergraduates in Dundee, and I'm going to use that technique, is using a theatre. We're going to break the fourth wall. And what I mean by that is the audience are actually part of the actors. We're going to have scenarios. I set scenarios with difficult professional issues which require communication issues that require leadership. And it's a way that whereby the students then interact with the actor, and I've already approached some names for actors in Egypt to develop that. This is the way of capturing these softer skills, which are very, very difficult to do by just setting them assignments or whatever. And then the last thing, which I'm going to start with the first module, we're going to do a wiki entry. We've got a student who's now a graduate, and interesting, she's an Egyptian graduate, and she has actually got a, a group of students, they were undergraduates at that time, and they made a wiki in, entry for a, de, uh, for a dental subject. And when I spoke with her, and she spoke to me about the Cairo Initiative, I, she's, we said, why isn't it in Arabic? It's not in Arabic. It's got to be in Arabic. We're we going to translate it. We're we going to publish it in Arabic. And it's interesting with Elaine Lee, who's a person at the university, when she questioned me, I said very strongly that sometimes this evidence-based dentistry could be quite, quite constraining. And the reason why I said it's constraining, 80% of the literature is written in English. Why don't we actually encompass different languages very much more? And so that's going to be very, very important, the wiki entry. So I said at the top, it'll be supportive, sympathetic, but it's got to be robust. It's got to be robust. But I also say it's ad cetera. I'm going to sit with the students. No, I'm not going to hold their hands, but I'm going to actually support them so that they feel part of the program. They want to contribute to the program more than anything else. And part of that, it's going to be weekly Skype. So Wednesday evening, I'm going to sit in front of the computer and people can just contact me when, when I'm not in Dundee. I've been given a lot of commitment. And when I'm not in Egypt, I've been given a lot of commitment to work here. I've got a few more slides, but not very many more to go. So how am I going to actually get over to my colleagues the actual core learning? And what I'm going to do, it's a sort of a themed-based approach. So I'm not going to say we're going to do crowns or perio or endodontics. We're going to look at several subjects together. So, for example, this issue here, the two papers in Science and Nature looking at cancer. Is cancer just because our genes are getting older or is it because our lifestyles are bad? And then we go into that and the role of screening. Is it, for example, that we're all healthy until we're screened so much that we're found 
that we're ill. And then we can look into things such as management of oral cancer using sophisticated techniques. We can look at quality of life issues. So the, the, the model will be, will be to actually embrace several different, several different subjects under one theme so they won't just actually get locked into endodontics, crown of bridge, paradontics. So patient with me, sort of going through the ins and outs. I'm going back to the first slide. No, I don't only want to be in City Square in Dundee celebrating with our new co cohort of students that they're going to have an MSc at the University of Dundee in concert with ASCDE. I want to actually be here with them and celebrate when they get their MSc because that's where I'm going to be working for the next few years. I do thank you for your attention.